Coming up on today's show, we'll take you through the big April releases, including Godzilla Kong, The New Empire, Challengers, Civil War, and Monkey Man, and more. We'll be letting you know about the IMAX Film Festival, where you can see IMAX movies for just £3. And I'm going to get very excited about April's action season, which includes movies like Speed, The Rock, Demolition Man, Con Air, and Commando. Welcome to What's On at Cineworld Cinemas. I'm Luke Owen. I'm Dan Layton. And we are here at the O2 Cineworld Cinemas to check out the big releases for April 2024. I'm quite stressed that we're already in April. But there's a lot of great movies to talk about. Yeah, it's a good time. So I think we should go and get... Let's go get an Icy. Oh yeah, got new flavours. Absolutely. Let's go get a Kung Fu Panda cup. Yeah, get the new flavours and the new cup. Let's go treat ourselves to some popcorn. Oh, I know how to get a good deal on some popcorn. Do you? Yeah, I'll tell you about it. Oh, lovely. I'll tell you all about it. Just before we get into April, Dan, we do mm. have a small matter of March ah, to finish up. It never ends. It, well, of course, you know. Madness. The, the months just keep going and going. Uh, oh, I see what you did March there. Madness. That was yeah, very yeah. good. It's a, it's uh, a play on words. And we've got Godzilla, Kong, mm. the new empire, mm -hmm. which I'm very, very excited about. Can I tell you a, a little gripe that I've got with oh, the, the, the marketing of this movie? You must. On this past Monday, they set up in the Thames a Godzilla they statue. They absolutely did. Like a giant Godzilla statue that's in the tent. And next to it was, was Kong holding a phone box. Yes, and he, and he had the big metallic hand and yeah. everything, which is like super cool visuals. It's the pink Godzilla that's from the new movie, so it looks rad and everything. And a friend of mine messaged me and said like, are you going to go and check this out? And I was like, oh, not today. I'm working from home today. I'll go see it tomorrow. <gasps> and then they messaged me being like, Oh, they're taking it down at seven today. Yeah, crushing. They put it up for less than 24 hours. That should be a permanent install installation. That's what I'm saying. There you go. Because, like, really, what this what this state, what this set, the state, what this <laughs> city needs is a big Godzilla statue. I think what most city needs is a big Godzilla statue. You see, they changed the Oxo Tower as well. I did not. So uh, the Oxo Tower, which says Oxo, mm -hmm. it says G X K now. Oh. Well, for that day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we well, see. I missed uh, out on all of that. More of this, please. Yeah. This is great stuff, and the film looks great as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of Adam Wingard. I said this on the last episode, but I love his work. Yeah. I'm really enjoying what he's doing with this. He is a director that is having fun. Yes. With the the, the franchise that he's got, so very much looking forward to this. You know me. I love it. I love Kong. Big Kong boy. Yeah, well, I'm a Godzilla kid. There so, it is. So I'm, I'm very excited to see my boy back up on the big screen. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of boys making their return to the big screen, we've got our <laughs> Kung Fu Panda boy here. Here he is, look. With lots of cool cups that you can get here at City World Cinemas. This is a little cup. Yeah, Jenny, it's, it's a cup. Like, I, I thought this was just a little statue that they had on the uh, the, the counter. I don't want to break him, but, but fill him up with a drink. It's good acting. We've got this Thank one as you. well. Got one over here. <laughs> <laughs> the crew enjoyed that acting as well. They, no, yeah, I think they enjoyed your shade more. <laughs> we've got these cups that have got very cool toppers on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah we've got them. this one too. Here we go. Cheers. I know there are people at Cineworld, like in the, in the Cineworld HQ world, yeah. that collect these. Uh, yes. And there's one person in particular who has loads of these on her desk. Yeah. Her desk is just surrounded by these cups and their toppers. I've, I've seen it at her home as well. Not, not their home, but like... Other people's home. People, people, people love a cup. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about Kung Fu Panda 4 in a second. But, we will. But if I may, yes, uh, just talk about must. other drinks that you can buy. Uh, I went to go see Ghostbusters Frozen Empire yeah. uh, at Cineworld. And you had a good time? And a great time. There Absolutely. And one of the things I wanted to do was get the new icy flavors. Mm -hmm. Because they've got limited edition icy flavors to celebrate the release of Frozen Empire. Yeah. Icy. Frozen. It already funny. Yeah. So you've got lemon and slime. Love that. Lemon and slime -er. And mini mallow, mini marshmallows, yeah. absolutely, yes. Yeah. So and we've got this one here. This is the uh, the 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 lemon and slime. You've already been at it. Of course I have. Yeah. One second. There you go. Whoa! I love a theme dicey. It's sharp, and I yeah. love it. Yeah. But let's talk about the return of Kung Fu Panda. This little yep. guy here, a little cup friend. Here he is. He's back up on the big screen. He loves after it. quite a little time away as well. Yeah. One of the things I've been really enjoying about this is it was sort of about how like Adam Wingard just looks like he's having fun as a director yes. playing with the Godzilla Kong world. Yeah. 
Seeing Jack Black just having fun promoting this movie yeah. brings me so much joy. Yeah. I love watching actors having fun promoting the movies. Like, you mm. know when you say like, some actors when they're promoting movies, like, oh yeah, no, I did this, did this. Jack Black is having the time of his life. The cast of Ghostbusters are having the time of their yeah. lives. Like, I don't want to have, like, that means that these people are passionate about what they're making and are really pleased with what they've got. Yeah, and that is, you can sense that through the movies as well, isn't it? Like yeah. when, they, when they put their effort into it. Also, I just love Jack Black. Yeah. What, what a gem. What a gem. But don't just take our word of how excited Jack Black is for Kung Fu Panda 4, because here's Jack Black himself. Why should people get out their house and come and see Kung Fu Panda on the big screen at the cinema? Okay, I'm not even joking. This is probably the best movie of the year. It's so dang good. And if you want to have a good time, you go see Kung Fu Panda 4. No joke. And I, I know that there's another movie out there right now called Dune. Uh, but this could be the Barbenheimer of, this, of the year. You go Dune and Kung Fu Panda 2 in the same night. It's the Dunenheimer. It's a bot. No, it's the Kung Fu. Wait, what is it? The, the Dune the... Fu Panda? Pandoon. It's the Pandoon. That's it. But as you mentioned, Dan, it is the Easter holidays, which means it's a great time to be going to the cinema, especially if you want to keep your little ones entertained. And with the Cineworld family ticket, adults pay kid prices. And since our child tickets are valid up till the age of 14, you can see loads of great movies. Absolutely, you can see Godzilla vs Kong, The New Empire, you can see Kung Fu Panda 4, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, even Dune Part 2. Yeah, if your kids are a little bit older. You're probably not going to take your eight-year-old to see Dune Part Yeah, because if you're not careful, they will be riding sandworms everywhere, and that's yeah. not what you're after. No. Quite messy. But maybe you don't want to see a giant ape and a big dinosaur mm -hmm. uh, throwing hands. Maybe you don't want to see a, a kung fu panda. Yeah. Maybe you want to go a, see something a bit different. It's it's a grown-up Easter holiday, too. If of you want to go out and do something, you're absolutely welcome to. And if, if you do that, you've got Mother's Instinct, which is uh, Anne Hathaway and Jessica Chastain. Uh, playing two mothers, uh, one of whom loses their child and the other perceives that mother as getting too close to theirs. And it's uh, got a, a very sort of mid-century aesthetic, very heavy on the production design. Those things that, you know, you, you read the reviews and they say that like, it's so drenched in that kind of style. And it is, and it feels Hitchcockian because of the styling probably, as well as the, as the, the content of the film. Um, and also, it's just two of our finest actresses being actresses. And the film has the word mother in it. So, they're mothering. There's also the Mexican animated movie, Little Eggs, A Frozen Adventure. Mm -hmm. And that's March, kind of wrapped up. Yes. Which means April 1st is here. And you know what April 1st means? Don't fool me. What are you going to fool me? Well, we have got comedy screenings Whey! for April Fool's Day. That's better. You can come to Cineworld Cinemas to see either Dumb and Dumber, the 1994 ah. Dumb and Dumber, or one of my favorite comedy movies of all time, The Naked Gun. Oh, Leslie Nielsen. Yep, very good, very good. Fond of that, big fan. Shifting gears ever so slightly as mm -hmm. we head into April. You may not want to see knockabout comedies with like The Naked Gun and Dumb and Dumber. You may want to go see spooky ooky season of Yankee. the first omen i can assure you i probably won't what? but no you know me uh it might surprise a lot of people to know that i don't like horror films i never really talk about it um are you a fan of any of the omen movies uh fan is a strong word when i'm scared <laughs> um i i can only take them in in the daytime but yep you know we had this i'm alone in that we had this recently with uh, the exorcist sort of like came back for like a new generation and we're now getting that with the omen mm -hmm. here like i love the original omen i actually love a lot of the, the sequels to it as well so it's kind of great to be able to go see a new version of the omen the other thing is like they're so uh the thing about horror movies especially is that they're so baked into culture that even even me a big scary boy is tempted to go and see the movies and then the um the the they, they they work their way into the fabric of like conversation and, and, and just even the aesthetics and the styles. So I, I know The Omen, I know Damien, I know all of those things because of how classic they become. You said scary boy? Yeah, uh, scaredy uh, boy. Okay. I meant to put a D in there. You're not a scary boy. I think I, I've never been scary in my life. <laughs> but you can call me a lot of things, but scary's not one of them. 
a movie that I know a lot of people are excited about. I, I am one of them as well, because I love the work of Jordan Peele, yeah. who is the producer of this movie, and I'm a big fan of Dev Patel. Yeah. Monkey Man. Yes. The two combining their creative forces together yeah. to create a very John Wick looking action movie. Well, it's interesting you should say that, because I think that is the sort of instant thing a lot of people want to go to. Uh, Dev Patel has spoken about this and is a massive fan of the John Wick franchise, obviously directing this movie as well, Dev Patel is his debut. Um, but he's more specifically looking at your things like Korean cinema mm -hmm. and Jet Li and uh, which is to what Bruce John, Lee. And, which is what John Wick took its inspiration from. Well, this is it. And, it's, and I think he, he's sort of wanting to not have it be seen as the John Wick movie. He's appreciative of the comparisons, but it, he wants it, it to be seen in its own way because after all, that's kind of what John Wick was. And mm -hmm. I think the reason that people do make that comparison is because John Wick was um, something that really felt like a, a shot in the arm of Hollywood, a really a really spark of energy. And I think that's what Dev Patel wants this movie to be. This is a massive labor of love. It's taken years for it to come together. Pre-COVID is when it was going to start, you know, production and, and things got delayed and delayed and delayed. And then here it is, and it is full throttle. It is, it is you know, balls to the wall. Uh, action dripping with sweat and grime and blood and all of that stuff uh, and it just looks ace yeah. it just looks ace and I, and and Dev Patel is someone who you know uh, we've seen on TV for years with skins and then obviously Slumdog Millionaire and through his career he's made some really interesting choices and I'm really happy for him having this moment as well if you want to check out a British comedy, Seize Them yeah. is up on the big screen, which has got some great British comedian actors mm -hmm. in there. Lolly Adafopi is yeah. part of this, Jessica Hines is part of this, and Nick Frost, Nick Frost in the cast as well. So lovely to get to see some British comedy up on the big screen. Looks uh, like stuff and nonsense of the, of the highest British tradition. And the Easter holiday season does continue because you can take your kids to see a re-release of Pixar's Luca. Ooh. Which I didn't get to see first time round. Neither like did I, I. I've only seen it post-release, like release, so it'd be great to go and see it back on the big screen. Yeah, lovely. Perfect. The following week on April 12th, the Amy Winehouse biopic mm. Back to Black hits our cinema screens. Yeah. Like, you know, Amy Winehouse is someone that I, I listened to a lot when I was at university. Like, that's when she kind of exploded onto the scene with that album when I was doing university radio. So mm. I was playing a lot of Amy Winehouse. Yeah. So I find it kind of like this weird thing to then be thinking about going to see a biopic of her work. Yeah. Because the biopics that we've had recently of, mu of music stars are ones from the 80s or the early 90s and stuff. And this is one that is like very much within my my timeline, mm. like very much within my like me recent memories. I think a lot of us feel that way about Amy Winehouse because she, I mean, for me it was when I was in sixth form and you know, when you get into sixth form and that, so young, I know, that culture of what you have at that time becomes in your mind the best culture ever and in my case it kind of a little bit was and uh, but uh, amy winehouse was a real driver of that you know and and also she felt like i think part of the reason that a biopic like this feels like it makes sense is because she feels timeless mm -hmm. she was you know very that very tabloid heavy um period of our of our culture and history and yet her talent transcended all of it and the music and the, the even the jazz stylings the performance of it the vocals it, it, it she didn't fit mm. and that was all to the better for Amy Winehouse um, we obviously had the documentary when she passed away uh, which was just simply called Amy which was uh, one of the best documentaries certainly one of the best music documentaries I've ever seen um, and so yeah I'm, I'm kind of uh, it's going to be bittersweet to I see so, to yeah. see this film yeah I wonder if they'll have that bit in the movie where she makes the Zootons irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, it's the bit where she gets the Grammy. It's always just a bit of, you know, she she's joking about on stage about uh, Justin Timberlake's album and then yeah. Tony Bennett says her voice and she's like, it literally looks like a princess, a princess moment. Um, yeah. yeah, it's I, it's going to be it's going to be a, a, an experience to see this film. But a slightly different change of pace uh, uh, across one of the other screens is going to go see Civil War, which is available on IMAX. Yeah. And looks like a movie you may want to go and see on IMAX as well. I, like, I, I mean, I will say for any movie, go and see it on IMAX. Yeah. But this is one of those movies where I think it's going to be on a very grand scale. We were talking um, before coming in to film about the movie industry in general and how we've had the sort of age of the, the blockbuster and that's been so much fun and what's interesting about the the style of movie we're coming out and part of the reason i like this time of year at the movies as much as all the others is because you still see a lot of different things we've got comedy we've got biopic we've got heavy action and then we've got something like this which is uh 
it, it's it's um, very independent movie yeah. feel, but with that grand scale and with that very um, complicated and challenging subject matter. Um, very of its time. Provocative. Yeah, a very much sort of like the conversations that we're having yeah. at the moment, writ large and very large on an IMAX screen. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited for this one. I'm a big fan of the director's work. I'm a big fan of the cast. Um, and it, and every time I watch the trailer, I get a little bit spicy in my yeah. seat. I'm a little bit uncomfy, a little bit excited, a little bit, all of the emotions at once. And I, I'm 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 really ready. This is probably my pick of the month. Maybe I don't know. There's a lot of good ones. Yeah, I think any time you put up a movie that has like the the in the first opening like five words of a description, post-apocalyptic. Yeah, I'm there. Like I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. I'm, I'll be there day one for that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Speaking of IMAX, we are once again doing. Uh, IMAX Film Festival. And it's a good lineup this year. It's a really good lineup this year. And what a deal you get. You're right there with Yeah, you? no, I, I, I got. Um, it's, it's my fault. It's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Not only have we got a great lineup of movies, it's such a good deal. Yes. So this is the way that IMAX Film Fest works. You get to go see these IMAX movies for three quid. Just three Just quid. Three. Just three quid. We've got a great lineup that includes. The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, the Super Mario Brothers movie. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse and the recently crowned best picture, My Eyes See Oppenheimer. It's so good that Oppenheimer keeps getting these chances oh my gosh. to be back up on IMAX. Yeah. It, it was always, I, we spoke about it at the time, it was a fascinating experience for them making it because Christopher Nolan obviously loves IMAX. He loves it as a format, films with it all the time. But this was something where he was using it not just for the scale of the whole thing, which obviously makes a lot of sense, but also very close up, requiring these incredible performances, these Oscar winning performances with an IMAX camera super close up. So you're getting the, the camera, uh, you're getting the, the performance so intimate. It's mm. very, it's, it's, there's a, it's, a, it's a very interesting use of the technology. And I love it. I, I love the movie. I think it was fantastic. It stayed with me ever since. It's wonderful that a film that connected with people so heavily at the time, part of that whole Barb and Heimer extravaganza, went on to win the best picture. Um, go and see it again. I know you've seen it already. Go and see it again. It's only three quid. And you can really enjoy the the opulence of IMAX and going to see something that's so bright and colourful mm. like the Super Mario Brothers. Oh my god, movie, I loved uh, it. Which a film I, that, I saw really, that really much enjoyed. Like it's it's so much like my kid loves it. Mm. Like it's because it is just so bright and colourful and fun. Yeah. And then you got like Spider-Verse. Yeah. Like, what a great movie to go check out on IMAX as well. With, so much to take in. That's exactly it. Yeah, there's so many details that you can pick out on on the IMAX screen. I actually saw that movie little behind the scenes for you. I saw Across the Spider-Verse for the first time in this very cinema that we're sitting uh, in at the moment. Um, and I just was sort of so taken by all of the different colours, all of the different um, styles, you know, the various different characters bring their own styles with it. And I just, I could have carried on the whole yeah. way through. Um, so it'd be, it'd be amazing to go and see it in full IMAX glory. So three quid to go yeah. see an IMAX movie. Bargain. Already a great deal. Yeah. What if I was to give you an add-on to that? Keep talking. You can get a small drink and a small popcorn mm -hmm. for four quid. Hang on, four plus three equals seven. Does, so Are you does. telling me I could have a cinema trip to the glorious, wonderful IMAX with popcorn and drink for seven pounds? I mean, it, it feels significant. It does. And I think that that sounds like a great day out to me. Yeah, I mean, that's like, that's classic. We love that. Yeah, for seven quid, you can't get much for seven quid these days. But you can get this. The week after that, we've got the release of Abigail, mm -hmm. and sometimes I think about Dying, which is our new Daisy Ridley ah. movie, uh, in which she stars as a, a woman named Fran who sometimes thinks about dying. Yeah. But then she sparks up a friendship, nay, a relationship with a co-worker, <gasps> and now the only person who's in her way is herself. Oh. We yeah. like we like a bit of Daisy Ridley. Actually. Yeah, it's good to see Daisy Ridley sort of yeah. back in back in the saddle, back doing some acting again. Daisy Ridley, she's one of our own. British homegrown, made it big. Oh, I see, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I, th I thought you were trying to tell me there's a, a, a punk song. No, no, no. I mean, there could be. Daisy Ridley. That's a football chant, but you know. <laughs> uh, and also, The Book of Clarence. Yes, The Book of Clarence, which uh, I saw at the film festival, uh, um, and is by the director of The Harder They Fall, which was, again, a very style-heavy Western film. This one is a biblical story about Clarence, um, and it is 
dripping in design elements and stylistic uh, approaches to the camera work, the performances, the music. Um, it's funny, it's uh, tense, it's, it's a lot. Uh, I loved it. There you go, that's a review. But if you don't want to wait until the release mm. of The Book of Clarence, which is, you know, it's in mid-April. Yeah, that's ages away. What if I could tell you, you could see it on the 2nd of April? Say more things like that. So we have the unlimited card, which obviously gets you yep. cinema tickets yep. for, for now. Yep. It gets you discounts on your, 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 your popcorn snacks and, drinks. and your snacks and drinks. Yeah. Also gets you unlimited screenings, which are just for unlimited card holders. Mm -hmm. and we're doing an unlimited screening of The Book of Clarence on the 2nd. Yeah. We're also doing unlimited screenings of Monkey Man, so you can get to see that oh. early. And Ordinary Angels, which is out the following week ah. after the Book of Clarence. See, I like an unlimited screening because it's the people who are uh, very, they're, they're the keen moviegoers like you. You know, it's a great perk of the, of the card, which is one of my favorite things I carry around with me everywhere. All over the country, I'll be like, oh, that's in the world. I'll go, I'll go to, I did it the other day when I was in Birmingham. So um, yeah, I'm a big fan of unlimited screening and it's a good chance to see these movies before anyone else to be smug about it. So that Monkey Man screening is on the 30th of March. Oof. So you're seeing that real early. And the Ordinary Angels screening is on Monday the 8th. And then that movie is officially released on April 26th. So you're getting a good like, couple of weeks there, aren't you? You really are, yeah. yeah. Also released on that date is Challenges, oh. which can best be described as the sexy tennis movie. Yes, yeah. I, Zendaya having uh, the time of her life being the the presence, the star that we all know she is, in all the things, massive success of Dune, you know, all all of the the TV work that she's doing as well, um, and this looks. I love tennis, mm -hmm. and I love uh, sort of Basic Instinct style yeah, kind I of movies. Be careful what you say next. Well, no, it's a family <laughs> show. Um, don't not. But no, I. Uh, <laughs> It looks it looks very very up my street. Yeah, I think this looks really really cool. Yeah. This has got a very like uh, I, I would say a clickable trailer. If you yes. sort of see what I mean there. Like yeah. The trailer got shared around a lot when it first came out yeah. because it's perhaps slightly different to what you might expect from uh, Zendaya. Obviously, that is a name that has plagued me because it's Tom it's, Dolan. It's what led to me saying Tom Dolan yeah. to to his face. Yeah. Um, which I, I think about a lot. Zendaya loved it though. Yeah, well, I think they, 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 yeah, I think they were quite playful with it. Very much enjoyed it. I, yeah. bet, I bet she still calls in that. Um, but I, so I, I had Civil War as my potential pick of the month. There was a little pin in there. This is it. This yeah. is this is the other one. Also released this week is ISS, which mm. uh, for you video fans is not about international superstar soccer on the N64, <laughs> uh, but is instead about the space station. Yes. Uh, so the the general premise is there's a war on Earth that breaks out, and in the space station, uh, both. Uh, I think I believe it's Russian and American yeah, yeah. staff astronauts. What are they called? I don't know. Um, are told <laughs> to gain. It's not like they're working at an R. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're told to gain control of the space station. So, and the, the tagline is the delicious. The war will be decided in space. The battle. Of, was it like the war? The battle for Earth. The will, battle that's for it. Earth. The yeah, I ruined it. Go it was on, a much better tagline. Try it again. The battle for Earth will be decided in space. space. I love that energy. This has got B-movie written all over it. Um, yeah, space scares the bejesus out of me. Yeah, I, I, me too. I, I think about gravity a lot. Oh, all Not the, the time. concept of it, but the, the movie. The movie, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You said to yourself earlier, you're a scary boy. I'm um, a big scary it's, boy. It's what everyone says about you as well. <laughs> Terrifying is Dan, he's a big scary boy. Well, Scary Girl is released this week. Hello. So a lovely little animated movie to take the kids to. Perfect. But it's not just the IMAX Film Festival we've got going on mm -hmm. this month, because we've also got a whole season that is celebrating the action movie. It's action April between Monkey Man and this. I think it's going to be absolutely uh, fantastic. Every single one of these movies is one I would say, like, oh, it's in my top ten films. Legendary. Well, like, absolutely legendary status. Yeah. It was like, that's a great film, that's a great film, that's a great film, that's a great film. And it includes 1987's Predator, which will be on Wednesday the 3rd of April. Speed, the incredible 1994 movie Speed, genuinely one of my favorite movies of all time, on Saturday the 6th. And The Rock, which is one of my wife's favorite movies, <laughs> on Thursday the 11th. We also have Demolition Man, which is coming your way on Monday the 15th. And Con Air 
on Friday the 19th. And you can get yourself excited for the new Furiosa movie because we've got Mad Max Fury Road back on the big screen on Monday the 22nd and Commando, the Arnold Schwarzenegger classic on Monday the 29th. I just I'd want to talk about Con Air though because it you, is... You, you never don't talk about Con Air as the thing. Put the bonnet back in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you, so is that your pick of all of these? Because I want to see them all. Because there's a few yeah. I haven't seen. I've, okay. never, I've, never, I've never seen Con Air. Oh, oh. Then you, I, ha you have to go see this now. And I, well, I will go and see it on the day. I've also, I've also never seen, I've never seen Speed either. <gasps> never seen Speed. I've seen Spice World. <laughs> <laughs> but Speed, it's about a bus that doesn't slow down. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I have seen Mad Max Fury Road, which obviously was massive when it came out. One of the best films. Yeah. Arguably of all time, I think. I genuinely cannot pick just a one out of these, this bunch. Because mm. like, I would love to say, like, I'll go see Commando because it's like one of the most perfect. When I told you I'd kill your last Sully, I lied. Like it's got, it's got you just love them because they give you an opportunity to do accents. But well, yeah, it's got the zingers and everything. You can go see <laughs> Predator. If it bleeds, we can kill it. It's got you know, Dylan, you son of a bitch. Like it's got some great stuff within that. However, oh, can, can I pick just one? I can't. Yeah, it's Con Air. Perfect. No, it's it's Con Air. Let me finish. It's Con Air. The Speed, which is I think Keanu Reeves' best movie ever. It is a perfect, perfect action movie that mm. really, really holds up. I watched it recently. It holds up so well, considering that it is now 30 years old. Right. Holds up so brilliantly. Demolition Man. Yeah. Have you, do you know Demolition Man? No. So, Demolition Man is about a cop who is in sort of like the 90s. Okay. And he is known as the Demolition Man because whenever he goes to like stop you know, crime and stuff, a building blows up or something falls down and he's like the Demolition Man. Love it. And he is going up against Wesley Snipes, Simon ah. Phoenix. Ah. There is this criminal mastermind, and they are sort of at war with each other. However, <sighs> Sliced Alone gets accused of a crime that he didn't do. Oh no. And both of them are put into a new prison system oh. where they're frozen. And then they are unthawed many, many years later in the future where there's been a, uh, when the San Francisco fault has, has gone off. So you're now in this new world, this, this new utopia where crime doesn't exist anymore. What are they gonna do? They create crime basically. So, <laughs> so Simon <laughs> Phoenix gets thawed this out sounds and, great. and he then realizes like, well, I can just do all the crime that I want. So they have to thaw out the demolition oh, yeah. to capture this guy Look. now in the future where there are no guns and there is no crime. And it's Sandy Bullock who is like the love interest and she doesn't know what crime is, but she's obsessed with the 90s. Right, fine. Honestly, I cannot tell you how great this movie I've is. I've got the app open, I'm booking it now. All right, <laughs> it's happening. I could talk about Demolition Man more, but we also have event cinema. That includes Sugar's August Detour D-Day The Movie, available on IMAX on Wednesday the 10th and on Saturday the 13th. An American in Paris, The Musical, oh, beautiful. on Thursday the 18th and Sunday the 21st. And we have the National Theatre Live's performance of Dear England, the encore performance, on Wednesday the 17th and Nye on Tuesday the 23rd. We have the Royal Ballet Live's Macmillan celebrated on Tuesday the 9th, then Madama Butterfly on Sunday the 31st of March, Swan Lake on Wednesday the 24th and Sunday the 28th, and Carmen on Wednesday the 1st. And we have a autism friendly screening of Kung Fu Panda 4 on Sunday the 7th. That's all we've got time for on this edition of What's On at Cineworld Cinemas. You can check out any of the movies that we've discussed today using the links in the video description down below. And if you enjoy this video and perhaps you'd like to listen to it while you're walking about cleaning the house on your way to the cinema even, you can get it on podcast platforms wherever you get your podcast platforms. The good, the bad, the ugly. And we will see you next month for more film chat. I've been Luke Owen. And I've been Dan Layton. And that's What's On.